Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you for joining me. Well, early this morning at 11.59 p.m., there was a magnitude 3.2 earthquake near Bottle, South Dakota. This was a very unusual event. There's no oil or gas production in this area. It was not caused by fracking, and nine people reported feeling this earthquake. Over to the west, we have Aberdeen. I'll zoom in to this location. We got the Missouri River. Um, here we got one response from Hosmer. Um, we got four from this area of Bottle. Another one response there. And Hoven, one response there. Here we have a map of earthquakes from 1872 to 2013 for South Dakota. And I'll zoom in, make this larger for you. First, I want to show you that most of the earthquakes are down south. Here we got Rapid City, and I'll bring it over to uh, the right here where we have Sioux Falls. In Walworth County in 1989, there was a magnitude uh, 3.3. A little bit below that in 1949, there was another earthquake. They don't have the magnitude of that. And then in Brown County, I believe uh, this would be Aberdeen here. Um, in 1900, there was an earthquake. Um, no magnitude was given for that earthquake. Uh, population was sparse and they didn't have the Richter machine back then to know the size of these earthquakes. I marked out some of the historical earthquakes. This is the area of the North American and Superior Craton, which is all part of that failed rift system that goes up around Lake Michigan and goes down to the Real Foot Rift System and the New Madrid Fault System. It's all one and the same. It's all related. There is no fracking. There is no oil production being done up there in the area of Bottle. The largest earthquake I could find for South Dakota was in 1983, a magnitude 4.4. And then Minnesota, the largest they had was probably a magnitude 5.0. That was in 1860. Um, there was a 4.7. In 1860, not far from Minneapolis, and you can see them here, 1975 also, there was a magnitude 5.0 earthquake, and that was uh, near Morris, the town of Morris. The biggest concern for a large earthquake here in South Dakota would be all the unreinforced buildings and soft structures. Soft structures are buildings that are built over large open areas such as garages. A lot of these small towns have many unreinforced bricked buildings that can collapse or have major damage from a magnitude 5 earthquake. Any earthquake has a chance of being a foreshock, a 5% foreshock of something much larger. If you're not familiar what a soft story building is, do a Google search. They are unable to carry the weight of the floors above, the stories above, during a large earthquake. The first floor generally would have large openings in the perimeter and the perimeter walls, such as garages, um, tucked under, under parking or even large windows. These types of buildings are vulnerable to collapse. On the west coast of the United States, they're working to uh, retrofit these types of buildings. In my last several reports, I talked about the earthquakes that have been happening along the New Madrid fault zone and how it's all related with that failed rift system. Here's an article um, posted back in 2009 about the Mid-Continent Rift and the New Madrid fault zone. It also covers the real foot rift system, the uh, superior craton and the formation of this rift system. And I talked about how um, with all these recent earthquakes, it would be terrible if this failed rift system was reactivated. The new Madrid seismic zone in the North American Craton is made up of reactivated faults that formed when the North America began to split apart during the breakup of the supercontinent. During the Mesozoic era, as the Atlantic Ocean was opening up in the east, rifting was once again reactivated. And intrusive igneous rocks were in place. Yeah, volcanic um, yeah, eruptions and magma was coming up. 
The rifting failed and the continent remained intact, although significant zones of weakness. All those ancient fault zones, um, though inactive, seem to be reactivating over the last couple of years. Though buried and very old, yeah, they seem to be coming back to life. And another thing to consider is our weakening magnetic field. And as that weakens, earthquakes increase, volcanic eruptions decrease around the world. One day, who knows when, uh, our magnetic poles will reverse. But that's another subject I've covered in the past and I'll probably cover again sometime in the future. My one cat was really upset this morning, going around meowing at the walls, meowing at me. Um, did you have animals that reacted from this earthquake? Right now they're all quiet and sleeping. But animals seem to sense when things are coming or afterwards. Um, did you feel this earthquake up there by bottle? If so, what did it sound like? The first sound of the earthquake would be what's called the P wave. That earthquake wave goes directly through the earth where the shaking itself is what's called the S wave. And the S wave goes around the outside of the earth and that's what comes in second and that's what causes most damage. So did you have some rattling? Did you have some minor damage, things falling off the shelves possibly to your foundation? Um, if so, put it down below. Thank you for watching. Please stay safe. Like I said, any earthquake has a 5% chance of being a foreshock for something much larger. And I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.